good to you. Can you just lift your hands to heaven? And begin to worship the Lord. Can we just begin to thank God because He's good? I realize for every time we exalt the goodness of God, we see more of the goodness of God. So can we just thank the Lord that He's good? My name is Miss Yolua Owolabi and I speak. Through speaking, I transform lives, businesses, and nations. So either I'm preaching, or I'm teaching, or training, or um, as an OAP, whenever I speak, I expect transformation to occur in the lives of the people, in nations, and in businesses. I'm happily married to my best friend, my best friend. And um, yes, God has been so good to us, and it's been an amazing journey and doing work together, doing ministry together, doing business together, beautiful. So that is who I am and that is what I do. Towards the end of 2018, I walked up to my mom. I know the story of my birth, but I'm like, you know what, just let me hear it again. So I think I need to appreciate you more, you know? And uh, she actually corrected something I thought. So I thought they separated, my parents separated at the point where she was pregnant of me, but that's not the story. At the point they um, pop C, you know, things happening. So they had issues in their marriage and they had to separate. So she went to check my siblings one of these days and you know, she went to check her husband. Well, though they were separated and you know, a little bit of stuff happened. <laughs> And then she got pregnant. And then she went back to my dad like, dude, based on that glorious worship we had, I'm pregnant. And my dad is like, nope, I don't want kids anymore. This marriage is even about to end. No way, go and abort. And she was under serious pressure to abort, but she insisted that she wasn't going to abort. And then it didn't even help matters, so the separation continued. She was staying with her brothers and yeah. So apparently she's been expecting this pregnancy somewhat. I think she got a word or something that uh, there's a child to be born, you know, so she actually thought it was a boy because I have four sisters for my mom, you know, so I'm um, still excited that, oh, finally she's going to have a boy and then my pop is probably going to be like, yay, and all of that. And then I came as a girl. Yeah, you know, and then she just gave me the name. So she heard the name somewhere and she heard Emisio Lua. She gave me the name and she literally gave me up like Samuel on the altar, and like, God, this child will do all the work of ministry I would do. I will not be able to, I won't complete, and the one I'm yet to do. She just, you know, conjured all the ministerial prayer and put it on me. I'm like, God, I give you this child. A little one in my life was, growing up was extremely strange. Um, I was a child at the age of five. I'm having conversations with people, asking them, do you know what happened, Bini Massacre, and all of that, you know? And people are wondering, was your father even born, <laughs> you know, and all of that. Because my, my parents, eventually they came back together, but my parents, they, they read a lot. My father is actually really exposed and, you know, um, my si siblings and all. So I'm from a polygamous home and I'm the 12th born, the last child um, for my dad, you know. So eventually they were able to mend their marriage. It got back when I was five. And, you know, I became my father's favorite. Well, I can't say that. My style will see this. I'm not my father's favorite, but I, I like to console myself. Like, maybe, I'm, you know, but I had a very good relationship. Obviously, he's doing my assignment with me. But I think I've always been a different child. I've been the child that I've, I think I just had this courage. This, I will ask anybody questions. I would do anything. I'm leading children's church, even though I was a child. I'm telling my, my colleagues, sit down here, we're taking this song. Um, um, I'm in church asking people to recite. And instead of reciting, imagine John 15, you know, as, like children, you expect to say, my name is John chapter 15. No, let me see do that. I'll be like, John 15. And I'll look at, every, I'll look at everyone. The Lord said, and I'll pause. And so my friend was like, where, where was that? I honestly don't know. I just, I think it was my, it's in my blood. My mom gave it to me. You know, so I've just been that different child. But he had his own challenges because um, at a point my mom didn't understand. Nobody did. Nobody understood this child. I'm the one, if you're having local government conversation, I'm there to represent the schools around. I'm there going to be trained to train others as a teenager. I've just... 
always been different doing and it came natural but i thank god for my childhood and i thank god that my parents my mom at that point my father became born again you know they gave me jesus they gave me Jesus, and I actually miss, I, I'm thinking about it, I, I wish people still do this, where we have Sunday school, we recite, memorize scriptures, we have the notebook where you write things about uh, what you learned and all of that. So um, I was raised in Four Square Gospel Church, you know, so we would go for competitions and all of that. As I got to secondary school, things changed for my family. Not like when I was born, the silver spoon was still there, but I think at that point there was no spoon anymore, man. I mean, it was going from gold to bronze to no spoon. <laughs> we had spoon to eat, but you know what I mean? You know, and things changed. My dad lost um, the contract, his property, a lot of things. So it used to be all those good old days. You know, the story of, ah, back in the day, and your father was the, you know, all of that, you know. And I didn't know that dad did something to my faith, even as regards God. Daddy issues. But I'm thankful to God. I went to a Muslim school. I went to Ansaruddin um, Model College. And I thank God I went to that school because I feel like um, it was, it, it's, it's very instrumental in my life. I became the first Christian to ever. Now the school is back to being a missionary Muslim school. So ever in the history of the school with the assistant at um, senior prefect or head girl, you know, um, I was doing French club, I was doing debaters club, I was doing anti-HIV AIDS, I was doing, so I was able to trace growing up, I've never been the one, the child to do one thing. I would do so many things and I do it so well. And I'm going somewhere. So all of this happened in my life, I really didn't understand, but all I knew was I loved God. And the way God was introduced to me was experiential. So you can't tell me that there is no Christ because I've experienced it myself. You can't tell me that God doesn't heal the sick. You know, so having all those pockets of experiences of Jesus, um, at some point I started struggling with ulcer for, it was terrible. I had to trust God for healing. I had to, you know, I would go outside praying, I would look into the sky, I'd be like, um, if you're right there, let me, let me just fall down. And then there was anything called slain, the Holy Ghost, I'm just like, I don't know where the thoughts came from, I don't know what I was thinking about. So for me, growing up gave me that experiential um, opportunities um, about Christ Jesus, about Jesus. And don't forget, my parents, my parents used to be Muslims. From being Muslims, they branch. My father branched to traditional, you know, just on the way to Christianity, just quickly detour, you know, and then God brought him back to being a Christian. So I pretty much have seen stuff. I've seen them, see when you say jazz, I've seen jazz in the day, you know, tie stuff and they come and greet you in your, your family's house and then nothing happened. I've seen my mom has been greeted by another woman and because she refused to collect the envelope, the woman, the, the stuff fell from her body. I mean, I've seen all sorts, but I've seen Jesus. I've seen Jesus transform our lives, you know. Um, I was talking about my secondary school. It gave me the platform to lead. It gave me the platform to pursue dreams. It gave me the platform to read. It gave me the platform. We'll go for competition with guys from the, you know, the other school, the Q to the C and all of them, you know, and then we'll come back representing Lagos State. We'll come back winning stuff in those places. So it kind of gave me this confidence that regardless of where you are, what you have, it has nothing to do with what God can do through you. So that's pretty much growing up for me. I remember, I remember, I have, I enjoyed my life, even though there was no spoon. Now, a little bit about that spoon is, so I couldn't afford to travel for summer. And don't forget, like I said, my, my parents, my, my mom, my dad, my parents actually are really exposed. We're living in a very good area back in the days. And, you know, so we had people there going for vacation. Mm -hmm. You are vacationing in your houses, anywhere like that. You know, we're in our house, just look at the sky. I mean, that's the far you can go, wave at the aeroplane and stuff like that, you know. So, I mean, that's, w that's what it was. In fact, when they started using generator, we had no gen. And for whatever reason, my father chose to use one face. You know what it is, electrical power. So if you have three faces, if there's no light in one, if there's no electricity in one face, you can change to the other face. My father did one. So, and back, in the um, electrical, um, what's called, the power sector in Nigeria is, was developing, still developing, you know. So you see that we don't have light, but our neighbors have light because we're able to change all that. So start to pray, Father, Lord, take everybody's light. Like, just everybody, nobody should have light, <laughs> you, know? you know. And then 
Because you see them put on the J, nothing. You had to use candle. I've had to read with candle, with lantern. You know, I've had to, um, I've seen us go through dark seasons. I've seen us go through lack, you know. But my mom, you have to go through lack with smile. You cannot, so you're eating, they call it vegetable of the land, meaning, you know, they have to just conjure a vegetable from the compound to create something. You have to be joyful. So you're wearing orange and pink for rehearsals, and you're feeling like you're at the back of the class. No, 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 that's going to come with some beating. You have to be, you know, with attitude, with graciousness, that like you're wearing colors of the rainbow. You know, so that's the kind of family we grew up in. My mom taught us you have to, contentment, you have to be great, grateful to God for what you have. Other people will still pray to have what you So that's the way we grew up. So people are going for vacation, you don't have anything to say. Um, people are back. You know, the best vacation is going for camp around Ibadan. Like, that's the greatest. And that one, we have to pray fully safe for it, you know. And um, growing up, that is one thing. So now I'm not intimidated, as it were, to see people do things, wear things, and be things that I, I, I'm still aspiring to be. Even when the feelings come, I remember where I'm coming from, you know. So that's, the, that's where this great child is coming from. I tell people if it's by environment, if it's by luck, if it's by what you have, I shouldn't be where I am. But if it's by the grace of God and environment as well, Jesus, I should be where I am and much more. So that's it growing up for me. My mom, my mom is a pastor in Foursquare. She's still a pastor in Foursquare. It's amazing. My father got out of the form. Like, I feel you have a call of God on your life. I'm just going to support you from behind, you know. I don't know. And then, so she went into um, ministry. So she started doing this crusade. So I think I've been influenced by it. You see, she would organize this crusade, and you see mighty things happen, and I'll just come out every time. Mm. <laughs> when I give you a life, you guys just want Jesus. I'm just out there, ah, Jesus. And, you know, so I just come out. I know. I would say, Jesus found me. Uh, because I don't think there's anything I did or anything. I, like I said, I'll just look into the sky. I'll look into the sky. And I'll be like, if you're there, just talk to me. Let me fall down from this. I don't know what I was standing on. And for that reason, I will fall. So I don't know if I was not falling or was the Spirit of God pushing me. <laughs> There's anything like that. You know, so I just believe there was something. And that's, maybe, that's why till now I'm really connected to the sky. I just love, anytime I travel, I'm just looking at the sky. We have this connection, you know. And then, so Jesus found me. So my mom, Sunday school, the truth is I was born into the Christian home because my parents were already Christians and, well, upcoming Christians as it were. Um, I was born into a Christian home. I was given Jesus even before I was born, you know. But I think when I was eight, that day I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I was well, working down a road with my sister and it was just talking about Holy Ghost. I said, hey, Holy Ghost. And she was, so I think... I was greatly influenced by my sisters and my mom, you know. So I was talking about Holy Ghost. I knew you can be filled with Holy Ghost. And I was like, I can be filled with Holy Ghost. Okay. And I just started speaking in tongues. I don't know if it was I was copying my sister. <laughs> I don't know if it was. But whatever it is, I'm here today and I tell you it was real. So um, I would come back home every, almost middle of the night. Because my parents, we, we lived alone in our compound. So we have this large compound. The story is it was supposed to be a boys' quarter and the big building. My father never got beyond the boys' quarter, so we had the big compound where we have to imagine is the big building. So, eh. so I'll just um, go out in the middle of the night, just sit down, I'll be singing, I'll be looking into the sky, and I think that was it. It was just building something. I would get the Bible and write out the introduction of each chapter in the Bible. It's written already in the Bible. Let me see why you're writing it, I don't know. I'll get a book and just write it out. I just felt like I was engaging something or someone, you know. But when I entered the secondary school, I became more conscious of God. 
By this time, we're already going for camp meetings. We're praying. I started with a lot of deliverances, you know, like, oh, wow, the devil. I'm like, I don't want devil. And then, so, yeah, you have to pray a lot. And then couple where I'm coming from, remember I said, we've seen, all, we've seen all sorts. I mean, so I tell people, you know what? The devil doesn't even need social media to get to you. I mean, you get. But guess what? Jesus is more real. I mean, it's not a competition between devil and Jesus. You get me? So um, coming from, where, from all of that, I've seen things. So uh, Jesus, he can kill all the devil. Why not? We're here. You know, but I started, started changing to experiential. I noticed I started singing. I will be leading worship, people will be crying. What's going on? There's something, I, I pick the mic and ah, things will start to happen. So I still did not understand. In 2004, I started, I went to start a fellowship. I just, I don't know why. I just wanted to, I don't know how to explain it. I feel Jesus found me because that's why I believe the scripture. It is God that walketh in us both to will and do for his good pleasure. I feel like, there was there's something in me that is working through me, you know? So I didn't have the passions my mates were having. I, for whatever reason, I wasn't looking for a boyfriend. Not because I'm, I'm like, I don't know where I got the idea. Whatever I did is going to be my husband, even if that didn't happen eventually. But he, I think he guided me <laughs> from all sorts. You know, I mean, I had people, I think because of my courage, because you engage me as a, as a teenager, as a child, you're wondering, how old are you? So I'm 18, people think I'm 30. You know, so because of that, I, I had a lot of people, older people interested, and I'm like, no, I'm keeping myself. Why? Jesus. I, I, I don't know why. I was just all about that. In 2005, something changed. Um, I think that period, my mom had a, one of those crusades. This particular day, when the room, my, my, I was in the room with my sister, my, well, she's not immediate, second born, Fikayo, you are the best. You know, and that day she was sleeping. I, I mean, Mosquito was just having a great day, just having, enjoying himself. They were just speaking into our ears, you know, just declaring that this is their time and all of that. And then my sister woke up and she's like, oh God, this Mosquito, they're disturbing me. I want to sleep. God, I want to sleep. Thank you, Jesus. I'm like, okay. I thought it was just for mosquito. Okay, that's fine. I went back to bed, and guess what? My sister slept, and it felt like the mosquitoes migrated from her to me. Now, it's a very funny experience when you think about it, but it changed me. I'm like, wait, she's talking to God about mosquitoes. And then I noticed she wake up every morning. My sister's been doing it till date for over 20 something years. She wakes up every day to pray in the morning. She will spend time, she will cry, and at that point, kind of music. So influence, my sisters would, were listening to Michael W. Smith, Ron Connelly, all those deep, that's just worship, and were listening to, you know, the cassette players then, and then, I'm like, what's going on? But it kind of piqued my interest. I wanted to know the God that can hear prayers about mosquitoes. I didn't just want him to be the one I can talk about, kill the demons and slay all of them like it's Buffy. You know, I wanted to know much more and then my life changed. I started this fellowship in 2006. Already, I, a friend of mine, <laughs> last year, December, reached out to me, he saw something online, saying, you see, you've always been crazy. You've always been the child that is saying, even when we are in secondary school, um, let's keep ourselves, let's do something for the Lord. Even if I didn't understand, if, even if what I knew that was, re was religious, but I had something, I had this experiential knowledge of Christ. So I started this fellowship in my mother's shop in 2006, I just gathered people, I just sent messages. Before then, I think I, I would gather people's numbers and send them messages that, guys, let's have network prayer. So there's, the, there's this midnight call we're doing. So when my mates were having midnight call talking to boys and me talking to girls and just having fun, I kid you not, we're having midnight prayers of worship and we're all crying on the phone. And we'll do this from 12.30 to four. I mean, thinking about it now, I'm like, girlfriend, did you have, a, well, I enjoyed my life. <laughs> and then we just have me that call. No jokes. At the point you could do is that conference call. So we had a conference call. I would just be worshiping God. I would just be crying. I'm just saying, Jesus, I need you. I want you. And I didn't know that was the beginning of 
crazier things. Because we started in 2016, this, um, 2006 rather, this fellowship my mother's shop, just a number of people. My mother at that point was by the door. Of which by that time, I started itinerary ministry in 2006. 2005, I was already, I mean, and my sister had been sneaking to Fountain of Life Church. If you're from those old time, you know how it is, our parents are with churches. You can't go to any church your mother is not going to. So I started going to Fountain of Life, singles are married. Um, in 1992 or 1993. And then, so she would sneak to these places. So she carried me. I was confused the more, because I entered Fountain and I saw people just, I'm like, hey, that thing that used to do me, this is it, yeah? Because, I mean, people were just worshiping with freedom. Now, I thank God for my foundation because first we thought us, we had all the, you were, were rooted in the world. We understood where dream memory vast and everything. But I didn't understand that liberty, you know, as it were. It was, I was struggling with it right here, you know. So I thank God for my foundation. I thank God for those two churches. That's, well, those two places I've attended my life. And it's been a good foundation for me. Complete balance, as it were. So I go, I saw Fountain, they would read the word, they would cry, they would pick promise. I, hey, why are all these people? And then my curiosity started that there's more in this God. And I think that's the beginning of my journey for more. I want to sum my life, I'll call it the life in pursuit of more, of Jesus. You know, so 2006 we started this program. I would sneak for Thursday showers. My mother would scream, where are you going to? By the way, I finished school looking for admission. I'll pray for everybody, they'll get admission. I'll pass my jam, pass my post but I just didn't get my maths. I feel like there's something about me and Matt, you know. <laughs> Anyways, so, but those period, I feel like God was taking time to build me. So 20, 2005 to 2007, oh my God, incubation, especially 2006, I would listen to five messages each day. Like, that's the way. Listen to messages. I was reading books. So people are buying stuff. Me, I'm buying books. Still date. I don't know how to shop, but just drop me in a bookshop. My God, just hold my credit card because, I mean, I don't know control, you know, as regards that. So already I was reading the books my style was reading, listening to the songs they were listening to, um, getting, so I started this fellowship. And a friend of mine was saying, Missy, don't make it just for female because just a female then. The conference call was for everybody. But the fellowship in my house was just for female. My friend was like, um, Missy, no, make it for, extend it, extend it. And then in June 10th, 2007, we started the House of Faith Fellowship, now known as OP365. I was starting a monthly program now known as When Friends Pray. Six, I went for my first itinerary ministration outside Foursquare. And that place literally erupted, as it were. I didn't know what it was, but when it was a small girl, I've always thought about the presence, because I'm thinking about it now, it's the same message. More of Jesus, there's Jesus is Lord, there's more of Jesus and all of that. And my mom had this book, God's General. And she always tell me that my story is like that of Amy McPherson, in the sense that her mom gave her up to God and she's like, I gave you up. My mom struggled for a long time. In fact, that first itinerary, she said, you're not going. I started hearing these words, and I'm going somewhere. You are too overconfident. And I didn't know those words did something to my soul till I became conscious 2015 to 2018. So what happened is, my mom didn't understand. Um, this girl is not following normal, you finish, you know, there's always something. Since I was a child, there's always a program. So if you don't understand, like, you see, your, no, no, it didn't start today. It's, there's always something. And that was like where I was getting life. My mom didn't understand. Then the Lord reminded her, why are you fighting this child? You gave her to me. And that day, 2006, my mom gave up. She just like, you know what, I give you back to the one I gave you to in the first place. And, but it wasn't easy for her. So to everyone that your, your parents don't understand, just apply wisdom, keep praying. If it's indeed God, he will make it work. Because looking back, I thank God for those covering, that, that, those restrictions in a way kept me guided. So 2006, I went for the administration. I met some guys um, called to serve. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I have this fellowship. I feel like I'm going to make it open to other people. Can I call you when I'm ready? Like, oh, why not? 2007, I went to a church. Now, I don't know how, where I got the word interdenominational. 
I don't know why I didn't go to Foursquare when my mom is the pastor to ask them to use their venue. But I just had this feeling that because I go to Foursquare, if I use Foursquare, people just think it's another Foursquare program and it's denomination. I said, no, I'm going to change that. I'm going to redeem. I went to Redeem Church. I was walking, the Lord told me, go to this, he told me where. So I went to that church. I, nobody, there was no service, it was a Monday. So I don't know what I was looking for. But for whatever reason, as I was walking, a guy walked out. I mean, so rest in peace, it's late now. And he said, is there anything you're looking for? I said, I don't know. I have this program in my mind. I feel like I should come here so I can use this place. And the guy said, uh, okay. He said, hmm, what's your program? I said, I feel like worship is not just a song. It's a lifestyle. I feel we should teach people. I feel we should just gather together and pray. And the guy was looking at me. He said, you know, I have that kind of vision too. I said, really? He said, you know what you do? Come back to So he gave me expo. Come back to see. Write a letter. Bring it to the elders of the church. So I wrote a letter. Brought it to the elders of the church. And they were wondering. I said, okay, we're going to call you for an interview. At this point, I was just going to be 18. Right? So I went for the interview and they were just imagine me now, right? A smaller version of me <laughs> in the midst of about 15 or 10 pastors. Pastors with experiences and like they have experiences and all that. Like, so explain to us what's this thing you want to do? And I started, I don't know what I said. I said, okay, we'll get back to you. And they approved. That's how we got to the church and we started using that church. Now I had to recruit people. On the road, I'll call my friends. Don't you feel what I'm feeling? I feel like Jesus. You no, know, my friend was saying that, you see, I, I don't understand what you were saying. I'm just like, is this girl okay? Why is it looking for admission? <laughs> You've been at home, but you're just, I said, no. And that was it. And we started the ministry. It gave us approval. We started 10th of June, 2007. And yeah, it was just the day before my birthday. And I don't know if that one is God leading me or just felt good. <laughs> Like, I celebrate my birthday with something. And I saw people turn out. I saw, like, people came out. I mean, our first fly was as red as the blood. It felt like they just took red and splashed it on white paper. I honestly can't show you that picture right now. And then I just, I was just recruiting. And by the way, I had people that were way older than I am. People that are like 30 as at then. People that were almost 40. I, I don't know what I was saying to them. I was just recruiting everybody. And I said, it's going to be called Household of Faith Fellowship. Because I feel like... Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And worship is an act of faith. So let's do this. What do we do? We'll just gather worship, we'll teach, we'll... And we started that. And we continued for years. And every Tuesday since 2007 to like 2012, we were rehearsing every day in my house, my parents' house. So that's how I started my own personal journey with God as regards ministry, as regards teaching and preaching. It wasn't because I, 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 was, I thought I was doing itinerary ministry. It wasn't because I felt like I wanted to preach. I just had a burden to bring people together and let us let's know Jesus more. Let's worship him. I wasn't looking for a title. I wasn't looking for anything. I just loved God. And that was how I started. Mm -hmm.